Today we're going to be looking at the Versatrax, a somewhat lower priced mid-size model from Joey. The Versatrax has been on our radar for a while now, since Joey is owned by the same holding company as Nuna, which produces somewhat more premium models at a higher price point, and thus has the possibility of offering a bit more bang for its buck in a lower price class. And today then, we're going to give the Versatrax a thorough rundown, going over its advantages and disadvantages in terms of child comfort, ease of use, performance and mechanics, as well as in relation to which uses, lifestyles and environments it may suit. And starting off with some stats, the Versatrax clocks in at 11.7 kilos and folds down to 86 by 65 and a half by 36 centimeters with the seat attached. It can take 22 kilos in the seat and four and a half kilos in the underslung shopping basket. Looking at child comfort, the Versatrax's seat has a decent width of 32 centimeters and a combined length of 95 centimeters determined by adding up the lengths of the backboard, baseboard, and adjustable leg rest. This on its own is sufficient for seating most children until around two and a half, but note that as children get older than this, the Versatrax is a bit less comfortable due to three factors, that the canopy is flush with the top of the seat, limiting headspace, that the adjustable leg rest doesn't fold down vertically enough to not interfere with a toddler's legs when using the footrest, and most importantly, that the baseboard is pretty shallow, meaning that an older child may often feel as though they're sliding out of the seat. Beyond the dimensions, the Versatrax's seat has a good fully upright position, but does not lie entirely flat, which is a missed opportunity for seats of this sort in my opinion. And also, while the canopy is sufficiently long, the fact that its extra extension panel has large mesh windows has led to a fair amount of criticism that it doesn't provide sufficient sun coverage. And in addition, the canopy hinges are also somewhat weak, meaning that the canopy may fall back if you're jostling your way over bumpier ground. When it comes to parent comfort and ease of use, the Versatrax has a decent range of handle height, between 100 and 108 centimeters, and a relatively large and accessible shopping basket. Folding the model is easy once you get used to it, involving only depressing the safety button, raising the recline adjustment flap, and flipping the seat forwards, though I would note that the process is firstly quite loud, and also that the fact that activating the fold runs through the recline mechanisms on the seat frame can make the procedure a bit fiddly and prone to alignment problems, whereby the seat sometimes gets hung up halfway into its fold. When folded, the Versatrax is a bit unwieldy in my opinion, with a standing fold that's less stable than with most models, and a latch for holding the folded chassis together that's too easily unlocked. With regards to size and weight, the Versatrax folds pretty flat, but is still bulky in terms of length and width, at least in relation to what the model offers in terms of terrain capability, where the suspension is unfortunately wound so over tight that there's essentially zero shock absorption. In addition, the model's handle is also loosely fitted, making it rattly and noisy when driving, and the positioning of the seat also makes it quite front heavy, making it a bit hard to steer, especially with the seat facing forwards, where a child's weight overloads the front wheels, and also heavy to tip, as one must do when going up a curb, for example, a problem that is further exacerbated by the horizontally flat angling of the handlebars, where, with a heavier child facing forwards, there is, in my opinion, even a feeling that the handle might break from the strain of tipping. All right, moving on to the mechanics of the Versatrax. Despite being loosely fitted and angled wrong for tipping, the model's handle is relatively simply designed with regards to internal components, involving only a basic wire and pin activated telescopic function, built sturdily and unlikely in my opinion to develop problems down the line. When it comes to the folding system, other than that, that fold runs through the seat frame, which makes it somewhat weaker and more prone to issues as the frame loosens over time, the folding mechanisms on the chassis are also simple and durable. And lastly for overall structure, other than the frame for the shopping basket being a bit cheaply riveted, the design of the Versatrax is quite rigid and provides good horizontal support via the model's welded rear crossbar, front frame, the seat itself, and the handle, and the hinges and connection points as well are also decently reinforced. Moving down to the rear frame of the model, as I already mentioned, the suspension is one of the Versatrax's downfalls, being a bit too tight for the stroller's weight and thus failing to provide any real shock absorption. 
The brake system is wire-based and does not have an adjustment screw for allowing parents to change tension in the wire in order to mitigate wear over time, but it is at least disassemblable, making it possible to replace the wire or other components if necessary. As far as the wheels are concerned, the Versatrax has large 9.5 inch rear wheels with foam filled tires that are sturdily built and well connected within the rear housings and would have provided the model with somewhat better than average terrain capability for a model of its size were it not for the miscalculated suspension. And looking lastly at the front end, the Versatrax's 6.7 inch front wheels have that same chunkier terrain orientation with regards to tire type, though the suspension is again unfortunately too tight. The model has decently built swivel locks with big fat pins, unlikely to wear down too much and fail over time, and the connection between the front wheels and the housings is also well designed and quite tight, which is good for the model not developing wobble problems down the road, but which also unfortunately contributes to the model's heavier steering, in particular again with an older child and the seat facing forwards. So should you get the Versatrax then? Eh. I guess it would be unfair not to give it at least a maybe rating. From a functional perspective, the Versatrax has a fair number of problems, with less than perfect seat and folding characteristics, being pretty rattly and unsuspended to drive, and being heavy to both tip and steer. And there's also not really a single combination of environment and lifestyle factors in which it really excels, since it doesn't provide even close to the performance needed in its seat or driving characteristics to justify its weight and size. But, at the same time, it doesn't score anywhere close to lowest in my opinion with regards to longevity in its price class, and it is cheap, especially with the amount of stash you get with purchase. And so, judged as a budget model for parents who need a reversible seat model and live in parts of the world where it's really hard to get a hold of decent brands and models either new or used, the Versatrax might be worth considering, provided that the rest of your purchasing selection is even worse. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.